Hi, it's Sharon Lipinski and welcome to The Habit Huddle, where I share a quick tip, an insight, or a strategy that you can use to master your habits. Because the only thing that is standing between you and the life you want are the good habits you wish you had and the bad habits you wish you didn't. And in this episode, we're talking about the seven generosity habits. So I wrote a book called 365 Ways to Live Generously, Simple Habits for a Life That's Good for You and for Others. And this book is the application of my YouTube videos because here's the dirty secret about habits. You don't have to know what you're doing. You don't have to believe you're worth it. You don't have to think about creating habits. Nobody wakes up one day and says, you know, gosh, if if I just buckle down and I stick to it and I believe that I deserve this and I enlist my friends and my family in supporting me, I think that I can make a habit of going to McDonald's for lunch every day. Nobody says that. (laughs) Nobody says that and yet plenty of people have that habit. That's because you are what you repeatedly do. Habits are created through repetition, right? It is really that simple. And so this book is a daily book and every day you have the opportunity to practice one of the seven generosity habits, right? So that over the course of the year, you build that neural pathway, but you build it gently, easily, and consistently. And I chose these seven habits because I wanted to create a life for myself where I was healthy in body, mind, and spirit, where I had deep, meaningful relationships with people, where I experienced less stress, more peace, more joy, and where I was supporting causes that I cared about with my time and my money. So I chose these seven habits to ensure that that is what would happen just naturally as a byproduct of having these habits. So we're going to talk about what those habits are. And I call these the generosity habits. And I know that when people think about generosity, they think it means giving to other people. And and yes, that is true. That is part of it. But you also have to be generous to yourself right? You have to tip over your cup to give to others, but if there is nothing in the cup, you can't give as much. So these habits are just as much about taking care of you as they are about taking care of other people. Habit number one is taking care of your physical health because you have things to do. You have places to go and people to see. Living life takes a lot of energy, and the better your physical health is, the more energy you're going to be able to use to accomplish all of the things that you want to accomplish. Physical health fuels a generous life because it gives you that energy to show up. Wherever it is that you need to show up, whether that's at home, at work, in your community, taking care of your physical health is generosity habit number one. Mindfulness is generosity habit number two, and this habit is fundamental because any task that you want to finish, any habit that you want to create, any relationship that you want to build, it becomes easier and easier the more and more time you spend being mindful. Mindfulness fuels a generous life because it gives you the opportunity to notice opportunities, opportunities to give to somebody else, opportunities to notice what you need, what you need to give to yourself. So mindfulness is generosity habit number two. Relationships is generosity habit number three because the quality of our lives is directly related to the quality of our relationships. We know that people with strong, deep, meaningful relationships with people have better physical and emotional well-being. And relationships fuel a generous life because it's our relationships with other people, friends, family, community members. These relationships actually create these opportunities for us to be generous. Generosity habit number four is connecting with yourself because one of the most important relationships you have is the one that you have with you. And the right self-connection habits helps you know and honor all of who you are, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The right self-connection habits nurture your spirituality. 
our connection with ourself fuels a generous life because it helps you evaluate your desire, your capacity to give. Sometimes being generous actually means saying no to other people. The fifth generosity habit is gratitude. Gratitude is one of my favorite habits because it has such a capacity to influence every part of your life, physical, emotional, social, work, you name it. Gratitude will help improve your life. And gratitude is very simple. It's just acknowledging that something good has happened and that you are not the source of that goodness. And, gener and gratitude fuels a generous life because it inspires within you a feeling of enough. And if you have enough, then you have enough to share. You have enough to be generous. And generosity habit number six is simplicity. And simplicity is just about directing your scarce resources to what is most important to you and letting go of everything else. And that's why simplicity will fuel your generous life because it will give you the time, the money, the energy, the space to direct to what makes you happy, what accomplishes your goals, to what you need to do. It gives you the opportunity to act on your generous impulses. And generosity habit number seven is philanthropy. And philanthropy is what people typically associate with generosity, right? It's giving your time and money to causes you care about. But it is only one of the seven habits, but it is a very important habit because philanthropy is where the rubber meets the road. It is where the tongue in your mouth lines up with the tongue in your shoe. If you want to make the world a better place, then you have to do something about it, right? And philanthropy is you doing something to make this world a better place. So I wanna hear from you. Which one of these habits do you wanna work on? Now for me, it is always relationships because I'm such an introvert and I always feel so socially awkward that I have to consciously, constantly, work on taking care of relationships or building new relationships. It is not something that comes naturally to me at all. So I constantly work on this one. What about you? Which one of these habits is an opportunity for improvement for you? If you enjoyed this episode, click the thumbs up. And for more tips on mastering your habits, click subscribe. Thanks so much for joining me for the Habit Huddle.